we come now to item number uh, 10, uh, number 9, I'm sorry, on the, uh, on the agenda, which is a, a review of the findings of the Water Supply and Wastewater Network bylaw. And we do have, um, I've just checked that we've got them online at the moment, um, two representatives from Watercare, uh, Rosalind Klein and Mark Bishop. Uh, Rosalind uh, and Mark, are you on the line? Yes, hello, can you hear us? Uh, I can hear. Yep, yep, you're both together. Yep, that's good. Um, so just before um, I get you to introduce the topic, um, <clears throat> maybe uh, uh, Councillor Linda Cooper, you'd like to move? Um, I will, and, and, and I wouldn't mind. Um, normally at these we outline a little bit of the rationale for this, if that's possible. If I'll, I'll invite you to speak straight after our presenters from, from Watercare. Watercare. And I'll just get a seconder. Is there a seconder for the paper? Yes. I'll, I'll second. second. I'll second. Chris Darby. Chris, um, thank you. So it's been moved and seconded. Um, Rosaline and uh, Mark, if you'd like to introduce the paper, please, and then I'll ask uh, Linda to speak to it. Sorry, um, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, I'm just. You've asked me to. Um, have you moved this, or did no, you no, ask me no. to move it? I've asked you to I've move it. If that's okay. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, the original didn't have, uh, it, it, it's been amended. I thought it was an amendment that was coming, but now you put it into your report without any discussion. And that's, so I am a little bit reluctant because uh, C actually assumes that that isn't happening and it is happening. And so okay. that's my concern around that. And I just, yeah, okay. it would be nice to discuss I, it with you before you yeah. just incorporated it in there. Um, uh, I think uh, staff, have staff have agreed that, that, that that's, that's an appropriate an amendment, amendment, but uh, perhaps uh, if I can ask uh, Megan just to talk briefly to that. Uh, that might satisfy you in terms of moving the paper, uh, but if you're still not happy, I'll, I'll, I'll simply uh, get, get somebody else to move it. But um, if, uh, if you could speak to that, please, Megan. Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, yes, look, I've spoken to both Councillors Cooper and uh, Darby about this this morning. Uh, there's no issue from it from my perspective. Also, uh, I know there was um, a discussion about maybe having it as a noting um, rather than a, a more directive one. Uh, so, look, I'm really in the hands of, uh, you know, the mover uh, or Councillor Cooper uh, in the sense of, of how she wants to deal with this. So sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. Um, I'm yeah, sure. my mic was off. Um, Linda, um, having heard that explanation, are you happy to move it or would you rather have well, somebody else do it so you can I speak think, I think that to it? And my concern is in the light of, <clears throat> of our previous conversation, there seems to be an attitude of we must control water care, where in actual fact this is our bylaw. It's not, it is not water care's bylaw. Um, mm -hmm. They administer it, but we get the final say anyway, and our staff have been working with them. So I think there's a bit of misunderstanding that this is Watercare's bylaw and they need to be controlled. Well, it's not. It's our bylaw. And so that's why I'm a little bit confused. Um, Watercare's role is, is suggestive, and we still get the final say on it. So that's why I'm confused as to why we would be directing or requesting that Auckland Council work with it. I mean, in my notes here, we actually work collaboratively, and that's why you've got about um, five people waiting on the line, uh, both from council and Watercare, to talk, speak to this if necessary. So that's what I don't understand, and I have a feeling it's, from my point of view, that it's about this we must control Watercare because people are unhappy about other areas, and this bylaw does not address supply and to accept the pipes that supply. It, don't, it doesn't address the building of new infrastructure or planning, it's actually about um, protecting the networks in terms of interference. And so that's why I think it might be a little bit of overkill, that's all. Okay, could, um, perhaps I can ask uh, Councillor Darby to speak to it. Um, I think the amendment originated with him. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Um, and look, I did check in with the Chief of Strategy on this. Uh, I proposed this in light of uh, the, the need for us to be more collaborative. And at the moment, as Councillor Linda Cooper points out, 
It is, she's, the, the councillor suggests that it's Auckland Council's uh, point of control, but C actually, um, as it stands in the recommendation until amended, puts water care holding the pen, and the pen should be jointly held on the next stage, looking at the options report. So the councillor, uh, councillor Cooper, says that it's joint. These words just confirm that it's joint. Um, so, Mia, I'm wondering if, if Watercare are on the line. Uh, we've heard from our Director of Strategy on behalf of Council management say that the amendment's fine. Can we hear from Watercare, uh, having read the amendment, and ask them whether it's fine? Yeah, certainly happy for Watercare to comment on the amendment, uh, if you'd like to, Rosaline or um, Mark. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, just confirming that this process has been and will be highly collaborative uh, at a staff level with the regulatory team, but also in terms of approvals through the regulatory committee. Um, so this amendment for us, um, from my understanding, doesn't change much the practice we've got, and it just highlights that um, there is a desire for collaboration. So, um, yeah, just confirming this is highly collaborative. Um, thank you very much. Uh, having heard that explanation, Councillor Cooper, are you ha happy to move it now? Yes. Okay. I just, I just don't like the inference that somehow, it were, it, I think if we read the paper, this is our bylaw. It's not water cares, but they do have a role in it because they have to administer yep. it. No, I think, I think that's fine. So it's now been moved by uh, Linda Cooper, seconded by Chris Starby, and if I can ask water care staff to speak to it, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just checking with Councillor Cooper that it's okay for us to, to introduce it, or would you rather do it? Well, normal practice is for the chair to introduce it, but um, I think the points I've made, I'd just like to make a couple of points, if you wouldn't mind, Mr. Mayor, that um, Watercare have led the review, but it's in collaboration with our council regulatory team, because we have the resources to do that and also that um, the options report will go through regulatory committee and will be adopted by governing body. So it clearly is um, an Auckland Council bylaw um, and it doesn't address future planning for water supply. It actually is about protecting the networks and that is what this addresses. Um, so other than that, um, this will come back to, the option report reports will come back and then consequently it will go out for a statement of proposal, and then it will go to governing body. That's all I need to say. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, thanks very much, Linda. I was going to invite you to make those points just after Watercare, but thank you. You've made those up front, and that's appropriate. Um, so, um, if I can, sorry, I can return uh, the, the presentation to Watercare at this point. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, um, just to introduce this findings report, wanted to say that uh, in the past few months since October, uh, Water Care and Auckland Council staff have worked together to uh, review the water supply and wastewater network bylaw. Um, the outcomes of the review have been captured in the findings report, which have been attached to, to the agenda of this meeting. Uh, and in terms of uh, regulatory uh, dates, uh, the bylaw was adopted in June 2015, so the review is due by 25 June 2020. Uh, we intend, uh, we are working on an options report and we intend to uh, present it to the regulatory committee at the end of June if that's, this is uh, appropriate. Um, in terms of the background and what the bylaw does, as said previously, it is administered by Water Care and it is an Auckland Council bylaw. Uh, the scope of the bylaw is uh, a lot more narrow than a lot of people tend to think. Uh, it is indeed only to protect the existing uh, public network from damage, misuse and interference, such as illegal connections or breaks of pipes through construction work and contamination. It also is the bylaw that establishes the provision of water use restrictions in case of a drought. Um, so all privately owned network and assets, all questions of wastewater overflows, questions of water takes, questions of trade waste discharges are not in the scope of, of this bylaw. Uh, the key findings of the report is that overall the bylaw has been working well, that it continues to be necessary, but it could be enhanced. 
Um, the scale of interference with the network has increased as uh, per the growth of Auckland pretty much. Um, stakeholders uh, have been consulted in this first stage, so there is opportunity for more consultation coming, uh, and they have considered the bylaw to be effective of effic and efficient, uh, but have given the feedback that some definitions could be clarified and some requirements could be made more specific. Uh, we've also had a review of how other juris jurisdictions do it and found that this, the bylaw aligns well with uh, how other jurisdictions regulate uh, similar topics. So we're very happy to take any questions or give any clarifications if needed. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that. Um, we've also got Auckland Council staff online, uh, Paul Wilson and Magda Findlick. Um, is, is there any comment that you want to add at this stage? Uh, through the chair, no, no uh, further comments to add. Thank you. Um, if I come back to you, Linda, is there anything that you'd like to add as the mover of this motion? No, just um, really appreciate the fact that Watercare are working um, collaboratively with our staff and also we need that to happen with AT with our transport bylaws as well. So this is a good model and may it continue. Um, actually, harking back to my previous comment about Watercare, but if we can work through all levels like this with our CCOs, um, we'll all be better off as a council, council, council family. Um, thank you very much, Linda. Uh, Chris uh, Darby is the seconder of the motion. Would you like to speak to it at this point? Uh, we're taking uh, comments and questions at this stage, and then I'll, I'll go through um, alphabetically again with councillors. Uh, uh, Darby. Me. Thank you. Uh, just some questions, really. Um, there's reference in the report about working with uh, Auckland Council teams. Um, can Watercare outline which teams have been worked with? That's my first question. Um, can you also comment on the um, the options report? That was the I think it's attachment A, isn't it? Um, the, and um, where we see recommendations for next steps, etc. Um, there's a at paragraph 20, I think it is. Um, sorry, that's in the main report. There's a sixth bullet point about decentralised water. Can you comment on that? Uh, comment on the teams at paragraph 29, which I've just covered. Can you also comment on uh, what was uh, involved, um, what came out of the blue sky thinking, which is in the findings report at 2.3.1, and who was involved? Um, and could you also comment on, I think it is 3.2.2, Two, where there's um, reference to purple pipe solutions. And my key question there is, what is Mana Whenua's view on purple pipe solutions? So I hope you've got those questions there, um, officers. So long list of questions. Um, who'd like to have a go at it? Excellent. I can, I can have a go, uh, Rosalind, I put a key through the chair. Um, Thank you. In terms of the Auckland Council teams that have been involved, so we've worked extremely closely with the regulatory teams, so uh, Paul and Magda, who we have on the line. Uh, so uh, when I mean extremely collaboratively, basically the draft has been uh, written and reviewed together, so that's been a, a very strong relationship. And then we have um, uh, consulted with the teams that have actually, uh, that are affected by the bylaw. So that's the Healthy Waters team and the compliance teams, and we've made sure to uh, include their feedback to ensure that the bylaw works for them. So those have been the main teams included on the on the council side. Uh, so that's the first uh, question. Um, and then multiple teams at, at Waterkeer because this bylaw affects uh, a, a lot of Waterkeer's activities. Um, in terms of um, the decentralisation, uh, we have done, uh, as part of the preparation for the report, uh, a review of how Australian jurisdictions uh, what they include in the equivalent of bylaws. And there's more mentioned, more mention of um, uh, rainwater tanks and uh, decentralized water supply. So it was one of the findings of this work uh, that uh, they could be considered to increase the focus uh, on those points. So we are currently uh, reviewing this in more detail to uh, inform a recommendation in the, in the options report. 
uh, in terms of the blue sky thinking, so that's not a step that is usually required in, in a bylaw review, uh, as it is uh, a blue sky thinking is a real forward looking uh, strategic view of uh, what are the trends coming up in the next 10 years to ensure the future bylaw captures that. So this was uh, pretty much an internal exercise at WaterCare uh, to look at all the trends we see coming in the ne next 10 years, and through the findings reported, identified a few trends that could uh, intersect with the, the bylaw scope, scope. So that's, that's what we did through that. Uh, and the question of the purple pipe is a bit connected to uh, the, f the first one on decentralization, that in Australia there, is, uh, there are a few provisions made to enable wastewater recycling and the use of recycled wastewater through a third network called uh, purple pipe. Uh, so that's the, what we wanted to hint at in the findings report, is that we believe that, as was said previously, uh, wastewater recycling could be a trend of the future. And we haven't discussed this with uh, Mana Fenua yet. Uh, we are this specific point. I mean, we've engaged with Mana Fenway, but not this specific point. Uh, and this will be discussed at a, a Microsoft Teams meeting with our Katiaki Forum uh, on Thursday next week. Um, thank you very much for that. Could I just ask a, a supplementary on, on that point you've just made about rainwater and decentralised water supplies? I mean, how much work has been done? Um, how much more are you going to be able to do within the time frame of, of this bylaw? And uh, you know what, what sort of um, what sort of potential exists in, in, in these areas in your mind uh, to assist with the you know the obvious problem that we have of uh, more frequent droughts and more extreme weather conditions. Um. I guess the bylaw only looks at a small part of this question, uh, as it is not about um, um, promoting the use of those tools. It's more regulating uh, what are the responsibilities in terms of water quality once someone has a decentralized water system. Um, so there is a separate piece of work that is going on currently with Healthy Waters uh, to look at increased uptake of rainwater tanks. So that's in a different piece of work. Um, so what we've looked at here is, is whether uh, the uh, roles and responsibilities around decentralized water systems can be made more clear. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, so it is a separate piece of work, um, and so you're not bound by the time frame of, of this, um, although there are some aspects, obviously, in this report that touch about, uh, on about water supply and drought. Um, can you give us a timeline as to when you'd, you'd feel confident about um, being able to take us uh, to, a, to a higher level in terms of the discussion about greater use of rainwater, greater use of decentralised supply. What sort of time frame are you, you working in for that piece of work? So at the moment uh, we are taking the lead of healthy, following the lead of Healthy Waters on that. In fact, I've got a phone call this afternoon to review with Healthy Waters uh, a leaflet uh, that is aimed at encouraging the use of rainwater tanks. Uh, so it's more their time frame at the moment. Uh, however, as part of the workshop that got mentioned uh, earlier this morning, uh, we could absolutely uh, include a part on rainwater tanks as of, as of now. Okay, thank you very much for that. that uh, that's so a helpful just some of the questions to follow up, yeah, then, Danny. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the supplementary questions. That draws some interesting information out. Um, so just going back to the question, uh, you, you told us about the teams that are involved. I didn't hear that the Chief Planning Office, that's our strategy team, was involved. And I, is, that, is that correct? Has Watercare engaged with the Chief Planning Office? I hear you have engaged with regulatory and healthy waters. Have you engaged with the Chief Planning Office? Uh, I think Megan Tyler was wanting to make a, a response to that. Megan. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor Darby, the, um, Paul and Magda uh, when, uh, are actually in the uh, Chief Planning Office, so they're in the policy team. Uh, so I think the reference to regulatory is particularly in terms of our policy team. So the answer is yes. Thank you. That's helpful. Um, Councillor, you've another question? The, the blue sky thinking, I heard that was totally internal, um, which seems rather odd. Why, why did Watercare um, contain themselves on the blue sky thinking and not extend out to Auckland Council? 
So I guess uh, through the chair, uh, what's important to remember here is that the scope of this bylaw is extremely operational based on the current existing assets. So the type of blue sky thinking we did is not on the on the future of water in Auckland, is really on what trends are we seeing, for instance, in terms of the damages done to our pipes and what could um, increase that. So we've, we've really gone to the people who um, uh, have an activity in those fields uh, every day in an operational uh, manner. Uh, however, when I say uh, it's been uh, internal to water care, uh, maybe I'm misrepresenting the reality uh, as um, in terms of those teams at Auckland Council that have worked with us have been privy to the uh, findings we, we are getting through that and have been able to add uh, their piece. Okay, thanks, Ben. Thank, thank you very much. I think yeah, I think what I'm hearing from you is that um, this bylaw deals with specifics, but obviously a lot of the things that we're interested in, particularly with the the impact of the current drought, are, are outside of this bylaw and, and need to be addressed um, separately, but with some urgency. So thank you very much uh, for for that response. Okay, look, I'm just going to flick through um, the roll call to see if people have got any questions or comments. Uh, before we put the motion. So we start at the top. Uh, Deputy Mayor Cashmore. No, all good. Looking forward uh, to Tuesday, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Josephine Bartley. Nothing from me, Your Worship. Thank you. Cathy Casey. All good, Phil. Thank you. Uh, Efeso Collins. No, no thanks. Pippa Coombe. No comments from me, thanks. Thank you. Um, Linda, we've heard from Angela. Angela no, Dalton. No, thank you. Um, El Filipina. Uh, just uh, well done, um, Councillor Cooper and uh, the team, as well as Watercare. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Elf. Um, uh, I think Shane's popped out for a moment. Uh, uh, Councillor Richard Hills. No, thank you. Uh, Councillor Tracy Mulholland. No, thank you. All good. Uh, Councillor Daniel Newman. Daniel, I think Daniel might be gone. Um, uh, Councillor Greg Sayers. Your wish. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, sorry. Was that Daniel come back? Yes, it was, Your Worship. Okay, look, um, Daniel, come back to you. You, oh, you go now. Hmm. Uh, look, thank you, Your Worship. Look, I just want to say, and it's been interesting, the discussion that's taken place, but um, you, you are right, Your Worship, that the issues that uh, probably are most pertinent in relation to security of supply and planning and infrastructure sit outside of this bylaw, and I would hope um, that this bylaw is understood for what it is and that the process for its review uh, will be respected. And, and if there are other issues that people want to address in relation to planning, probably that needs to start with the way in which the council itself plans for growth in the region, which then puts pressure on Auckland on Watercare's infrastructure. And a lot of that growth is actually an exception to what was initially planned. So I want to make that comment and I thank the officers for their work. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Greg Sayers. Thank you. Uh, nothing additional. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Desley Simpson. No, thank you, and thanks, Linda. Uh, Councillor Sharon Stewart. Have we got you there, Sharon? Uh, I think I can hear you, Sharon. Uh, have you got a question or comment? Okay, I'll, I'll come back to Sharon. Um, Councillor Wayne Walker. I've got a, a, a question stroke um, comment. So I, I understand the, uh, the focus and the limitations of this uh, bylaw. Um, quite obviously, we've got uh, a whole range of um, aspects of uh, water, non-potable bore water, stormwater, roof water, uh, grey water, spring water that aren't the subject of this uh, bylaw but um, are receiving increasing at attention. Is the way to approach some of the comparable issues that go to those other waters going to be the subject of a different bylaw? I don't think so, Mr Mayor. I think the thing is we've done our We've actually did a huge amount of work on our water strategy last year, and I think those, that strategy will really help inform our conversations more than this is just about the pipes that convey the water or the wastewater. 
more so. So I think you, unless there's something that comes out of that further discussion and you need a bylaw to manage or regulate it, it wouldn't be a bylaw um, solution. Sure, sure. I understand. Just in response you, to that, I did raise the issue of that strategy with uh, an officer yesterday, and I was told it wasn't a strategy, just a discussion document. So I am concerned that what I thought was a strategy, if it's not a strategy, needs to be strategized and given some effect because that need is now. I'll, I'll just get Megan uh, Tyler to comment on that, please. Thank you, Mr Chair. Look, I just want to support what uh, Councillor Cooper has said. A bylaw in broad terms really deals with particularly health and safety issues, so it is about the, the safety and use of the network as opposed to uh, you know, where suppliers um, is got from or what the supply looks like. Uh, secondly, in terms of Councillor Walker's question, uh, there was a discussion document um, that was approved late last uh, sorry, early last year. Um, the, the idea of that was that it would work, uh, could work into a water strategy that has not been completed yet. Uh, and, and I know it's a, a topic of discussion that a number of you want to talk to uh, and talk about. So uh, we're thinking the, the workshop that we would be looking to, uh, to do with water care uh, and council staff would be a good opportunity to discuss it then. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Megan. That's really helpful. Uh, Councillor John Watson. Uh, fine, thanks. Thank you. Councillor Paul Young. Oh, good, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And I'll just come back if Sharon is back uh, with us. Um, Sharon, are you online there? No, it doesn't, doesn't appear so. Look, um, thank you very much for those uh, comments and questions, councillors. Um, I'll, I'll put the resolution uh, moved by uh, Councillor Linda Cooper, seconded by Councillor Chris Darby. Uh, I'll do it on the voices. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 It's uh, very resounding. To the contrary, no. Uh, I declare it carried. Um, thank you very much uh, to our officers who are present. Thank you very much um, uh, for uh, Watercare representatives being online with us today. Um, we come to the last item on the agenda, which is consideration of uh, ordinary, extraordinary business, and there is none. Uh, so thank you very much, everybody. We got through in uh, pretty good time today, and we made some real progress. So um, take care, have a good weekend, and I declare the, the meeting closed. Bye.